In the seven years I've been running the Crime Bodge website and throughout the tens of thousands of emails I've received, the biggest complaint by far involves doorstep visits by the police. Ordinarily, this is prompted by an ongoing dispute between warring parties. Neighbour on neighbour hedge wars, friends and family fallout or sparring ex-work colleagues. In relation to these complaints, if it isn't the police refusing to do anything, it's about how they unanimously take one side of the argument and dismiss the opposition out of hand, even when both parties may be behaving equally as bad. Invariably, the police arrive at the door to issue a harassment warning notice, or police information notice as they are more inaccurately termed. Regardless of the reasons the police give for serving such a notice, they are delivered for one reason alone to put the fear of arrest into the losing side in the hope that they will withdraw from the argument, thereby ending the war and, more importantly, ending the involvement of the police. This crude approach toward mediation always leaves the losing party feeling embittered and alienated. Not only does their resentment toward their adversary increase, they lose total faith in the police as well. But the one question the losing party cannot stop asking over and over is why did the police favour the other party, especially when they may have been the true aggressor? As there never seems a straightforward answer to this, it loans itself to a mirage of conspiracy theories the losing party dreams up in a bid to explain the police's decision making. The neighbour has a friend in the police service. The police are still sour about a complaint that was once made. The other party is a police informant, and so on. All theories which credit the police with a knowledge and motivation that, quite frankly, they're too lazy and too stupid to acquire. Although there might sometimes be an element of truth in these theories, the real reason the police favour a party over another is usually much simpler. The other party was much nicer. Yes, believe me when I say that flattering an officer's ego can go a very long way. Too many of them suffer from narcissistic personality disorder, which led them to the service in the first place. All officers will deny that a good arse licking is usually all it takes to get them on side, but that unfortunately is the fundamental problem with NPD. The narcissist doesn't know, or will at least never admit, that they have that problem. The trouble is that most people wrongly assume the police will take a passive and impartial involvement in criminal complaints. They won't. You need to take into account that if the police don't like you, they'll take great delight in causing you as much trouble and discomfort as they can as a means to satisfy their own insatiable desire for revenge. A desire to get even will motivate an officer to pursue a line of inquiry far more than the pursuit of justice ever will. One of the ways the police enjoy hitting back is by informing those they've taken a dislike to that they won't be pursuing a criminal complaint that person has made. The police could just as easily communicate this no further action decision by a letter or by ignoring the complainant altogether, as they most often do. But when they know they'll get the satisfaction of seeing someone they don't like, being disappointed or even frustrated, the police will ensure you get a face-to-face priority visit so they can suck up that misery. And hey, if you're the fiery type, all the more reason to come knocking at your door in the hope you'll kick off or at least use some choice language so they can arrest you for a Section 5 public order offence. That's precisely what happened to Paul Pontin at the hands of Lancashire Police. He'd been one half of an ongoing feud with an ex-employee. For whatever reason, the police took the side of the employee and took a massive dislike to Mr Pontin. When Mr Pontin became the target of a prolonged harassment campaign, the police embarked on a token investigation and then promptly dropped the matter. In June of 2014, two Lancashire officers arrived at his door to tell him, in haughty tones, that dropped the investigation and wouldn't pursue it any further. Mr Pontin was understandably frustrated. The police did what the police do best, increased that frustration to boiling point. Simply apologising and making themselves scarce never occurred to the officers who suspected that the longer they remained, the more agitated Mr Pontin would get and the more likely they'd be able to retaliate and show him who was boss. And that's precisely what happened next. When Mr Pontin dared to swear on his own driveway, he was jumped by the two officers and arrested for a Section 5 public order offence, the de facto standard for malicious prosecution. When Mr Pontin rightly resisted, it was pepper sprayed in the face. 
He was then handcuffed, dragged across the road to a pub car park and thrown into a waiting police van, all of which took place in front of his two young children. He was then driven to the nearest police station, booked in and thrown in a cell. Still not satisfied that they'd punished him enough, the police decided to degrade and humiliate him by stripping him entirely naked for a malicious strip search. When Mr Ponting tried to resist, they threw him down and tore off his clothes by force. After making an intrusive cavity search, they left him broken and naked in the cell to dwell on it. All this because two police officers didn't like the way they'd been spoken to. Mr Ponting was subsequently charged with assaulting the officer who'd arrested him and harassing another officer. He was eventually cleared of all charges following a trial at Chorley Magistrates Court, with the bench criticising the arresting officer. After his acquittal, Mr Ponting employed the services of a conditional free lawyer and successfully sued Lancashire Police for wrongful arrest, false imprisonment, assault and malicious prosecution. Lancashire Police, of course, learned nothing from the incident and none of the officers involved were ever reprimanded. The story would end there except for the obvious fact that the feud between Mr Ponting and his ex-employee remained. By all accounts, it got worse as Mr Ponting eventually obtained a restraining order against his ex-employee. But by now, Mr Ponting's cards have been marked by both Lancashire Police and the force where his employee lived, West Midlands. This brings us to the recording of a phone call I want to play you, where Mr Ponting contacts West Midlands Police to update them on an incident in which his ex-employee has breached his restraining order as a means to further his harassment of Mr Ponting. The dull-witted policewoman who takes the call thinks she's talking to an investigating officer from Lancashire Constabulary, without realising she's talking to the victim himself. That victim being Paul Ponting, it quickly becomes clear that the police will say and do whatever they can to ruin and smear him, simply because he committed the cardinal sin of complaining about the police. Investigation team Wolverhampton, Lisa Jevons. Hi Lisa, can I speak to uh, DS Craig Ryder please? Uh, he's not on duty just yet, he'll be in later today. Could oh. I take a message for him? Uh, maybe is um, PC Liam Mason there as well then? Um, it, it, that, that's our team, we start at two. Oh, right, okay. Uh, what it is, um, I'm from Lancashire and... Oh God, apparently... Ponting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> Why, what, what do you mean? Well, the, the Ponting and uh, Hogan thing has been going on for about two years. Whenever we hear the word Lancashire, we just know it's related to one of them. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> Is that a bad thing, or...? <clears throat> uh, for these two, yeah. 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 Do you, how, do you, I take it you're not very familiar with them? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, are they causing problems, or...? Um, they are serial complainers. They have... The hierarchy dance into their tunes. They'll complain about everything, put it all over social media and be quite personal with the officers. Um, it will never stop until one of them dies. They keep fa making fake identities and accusing each other of all sorts of shit. Um, the amount of staff hours spent on them is diabolical. Really? Um, um, we only now, uh, our professional standards, complaints and discipline deal with everything for them now. Um, DS Rider is the kind of go-between, um, yeah. but it's reached that level where, you know, they 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 were um, they were constantly contacting superintendents, chief superintendents. It's like this has to stop. Right. So that that package that um, Lank sent, then I, I take it to not investigating them then. Um, uh, everything has to be done by the book for them. All right. Um, because ev it, it, to prevent things going pear-shaped. Oh, right. um, I don't know what their latest, um, I, I'm not part of that investigation, I'm, I don't know what their latest accusation is, but right. from this end we do things by the book um, to be completely transparent and um, so that we can't be criticised. Right, OK. But, but th that pair are never going to stop. So do you think Darren Hogan is, is, um, is going to be pulled in soon then? I should imagine so. They'll they both keep getting arrested. Right. And they what about Mr Ponting? Is he, is he um, a problem? 
He's horrible. Vile. <laughs> he was actually on... Um, oh, gosh. He, he was on one of the TV programmes oh, um, complaining TV, about... Yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh. Um, what, what's your role in it? Uh, I'm just... I'm part of um, the investigation. For Lancashire? Yes. Yeah. Um, for, for which end of it? He's it, it, um, it's Ponting to your end, isn't he? He is, yes. So he's Ponting at the moment, the victim in what you're looking at? Yes, he is, very much so. Um, <laughs> Are you sure about that? Okay. Right. <laughs> All right, go on. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is he that bad? Do you know what? <coughs> if I went through all of the history with you, yeah. it would bore the life out of you, so it's probably best coming from DS Rider as to what the best course of action is. Yeah. Uh, what's your collar number? Uh, I don't have a collar number. I, I am Mr. Ponting. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for your comments about me there. What was your collar number? <laughs> you came on here saying that you were from the police. I didn't. I said I'm from Lancashire. I never once said I was from the police. And I am part of the investigation because I'm running a private investigation into Lancashire Police. And now West right. Midlands Police. And no doubt yourself. What's your caller number, please? 59096. 59096. You're now going to be famous on YouTube. I'm sure I am. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have Is no that doubt. How you speak it? to all victims of crime, call them horrible shits and bastards. I didn't, I didn't use that word. Well, you use words to that effect. When I play the recording back, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'm not, certainly not going to make any. Um, um, assumptions of what you've used. Um, I'm not, you know, lying like you said. I'm a horrible person, am I? Do you realise that Darren Hogan possibly set fire to my car and uh, nearly killed my children? Does that make me a horrible person because I've reported it? And what, okay. what fake account... Listen, no, listen to me. What fake account have I set up? I've not set up a single fake account. So why are you making that assumption? Look, the investigation is being dealt with by someone else, so I'll get DS Ryder to call you back. Will you? Um, so, so can you tell me what is going on? Because you've obviously got a good insight into my case because it will bore the I haven't got an insight about. into the, l the most recent one. No. So what about the history that you clearly know about me that will apparently bore the life out of me if, I was to, if you were to tell me? Well, you know more about the history being Mr. Ponton than anyone. No, I do know the history. I okay. Do know, and it, Mr. Ponton, I'm not going to continue this conversation. I'm okay. going to get DS Ryder to call you back. I'll send this straight to my solicitor. Thanks very okay, much. Okay, bye-bye.